You're this listening is to Subtext, Subtext Radio. Radio. This is Subtext Radio. Subtext Radio. Subtext. Is this better? Whether on the Greek islands, along the so-called Balkan route, or in refugee centers in Germany. The coronavirus pandemic demonstrates yet again that in Europe the right to physical integrity, the right to health and the right to life does not apply equally to all people. Today we speak with Yusuf. He's a young Syrian who has been stuck in a camp on the Greek island Samos. Yusuf and his family are living there since April 2019. He's the contact person for many people living in the camp and translates for NGOs, the camp administration, or an hospital. I have been here for almost one year and a half. My family have arrived with me. We are a six-person family, you understand? Still living here, waiting for our documents to get ready. We already before didn't have any health care, you understand? We didn't have any access to health care or anything like that. And by uh, the beginning of Corona and the first cases appear in uh, Greek, we couldn't enter to any hospital. We couldn't go to any official hospital, you understand? We are just allowed to the medical centers of the NGOs around us in the island. And one more thing, at the start of Corona, the police started to not allow us to get out of the camp. They allow about 100 person per day, a 100 person from 8,000 person. They are just allow 100 person to get out to the town to buy food and other things. But other people will have to stay and wait for a more long day for other days to try to get out. And they may success or not. Every morning they, they distribute about 100 paper in the police station in the camp. So. If you want to get out of the camp, you have to wake up so early and go to the police station, wait in a huge line, and you may get a paper or you may not. Like the paper where they take, it's just for two hours. When someone wants to buy something and he don't have a paper, so he give money to his friends or he give the cash card to his friends. So one of his friends who have a paper, you understand, to get out of the camp, so that friend could buy for him something. Right now, they put for us a new rule that we can go out from the camp by seven o'clock in the morning, and we have to return to the camp by seven o'clock in the night. It's a new rule that they just started to work with it just by yesterday. Everyone can go out again, but they have to, like, don't stay uh, out for a long time. If the police see you in the middle of, of the street, they, uh, without doing anything, they can give you a fine of uh, 150 euros. Our salary that we are taking is just, like, 19 euros per adult, 15 euros for the children, for the minor. So it was a disaster. And for the food line in the camp, the food line, at the first day, we hear that we have to stay in home and we don't have to get in touch with any other people. We hear that also. If we stay in lines, we have to stay about two meters far from each other. But that didn't happen here in the camp. They started to distribute the food and the food line because we are not allowed to get out of the camp. So there was many people staying in the line and the situation was terrible. I thank my God that coronavirus didn't arrive to Samos because if it was arrived, believe me that all the people here in the island would be infected by it. And we came here as asylum seekers, you understand? We came here seeking for safety. We didn't know that the situation will be this bad as it is right now, you understand? If we really know that before we wouldn't come, we wouldn't try to come even here. We would stay under the bombs. We would stay facing the war in, in our countries and not coming here, you understand? We are just asking the governments here to give us a small part of our rights. We are still humans. We are not animals because they are treating us much more bad than the animal. Some people uh, ask us why you didn't stay in Turkey. It's an Islamic country. It's a good country for you. They will be humans with you, you understand? But something that the people don't understand, that Turkey accepted people in 2011, 2012, you understand? And after that, they closed the door. The people who didn't enter in 2011 and 2012 and entered after that, they couldn't stay in Turkey, you understand? They being illegal there without any documents and if they get arrested in turkey they will, will be deported to syria or to them countries that thing happened with me about two times it happened with me in 2012 and it happened with me in 2017 we passed to turkey in 2019 we couldn't stay in turkey because we know already that if they arrest us in turkey they will send us back again to syria 
without any humanity, without any caring about uh, what will happen to us if they send us back to Syria. So they deported many people. And if you watch uh, the news, you can know that something like that happening. And the people who will be deported to Syria, they cannot return again and be illegal again in Turkey. Greek is much more better than Turkey. And we say that there's still some humanity, even if it is so less. We are in a better situation than other people. We have access for water, even if it's so less. We have access for electricity. We go inside the camp to charge our phones, to charge our lights, to light up in the nights in our tent. Uh, when we go to shower, we go inside the camp to make a shower. There's uh, so little to access to the showers or to the toilets, you understand? So we stay in a line. In everywhere we stay in a line. In everywhere. For the toilet, for the bathrooms, showers, for the food, for everything. A lot of time that goes. And also on, on the food line, we have to stay uh, more than two hours just to take our food from the food line. And, you know, there's many newborns, newborn kids here inside the camp who are staying inside tents without any access to health care or without anything that we can mention, you understand? Today I saw a kid that is just two months old. He have a problem in the skin because of the bed bugs, because of the heat, and the kid was all the time crying. I told to his father, take him to the hospital. He told to me they don't allow us to enter to the hospital. If we don't have fever, if it's not something about coronavirus, they don't allow us to enter to the hospital. Or if it's not something that's so much serious, you understand, that they tell you, go away, go to MSF, go to MediQuality team. And they are trying to do their best, but they don't have all the stuff that they need for helping the people, you understand? And they are... A few people, according to the people who are staying in the camp. So now the situation of Moria is really, you know, it's bad. It was bad since five years until now. It's become more horrible and more difficult because of coronavirus. And all the day the people, they don't have water. And 24 hours we have just four hour water in the Moria. And people of Moria, they just know about coronavirus and they don't know how can they protect themselves and what should they eat and what should they do. So they don't know. Our medical treatment is really weak. We have uh, just two you know, clinics for 22,000 people and it's not enough. And they are not spreading messages tent by tent for the people. So a lot of people that don't know about coronavirus. So now we make one team and we are giving messages for the people. And we said, how can you save your children and your family and what should you do? And how can you meet with your friends and like, and how can you wash your hand like this? The people who are living inside, so they are supporting to each other. A one old man, he come and he said to us, okay, you are doing very good job. And I really respect for that man. He give a very big message for us. And he said to us, for 22,000 people in the Moria, we have just one shop in that shop. A hundred people that are standing in the line. And the behavior of the shopkeepers is really bad with the refugees. They are doing, you know, like animals. They are treated like animals. And that line, a pregnant woman, they are standing, an old man, 
who has a sugar, who has a blood pressure, who has a heart problem. So the old man, they says, we are tired of these lines. Our all day, we are spending just in the lines. Morning, we wake up, our breakfast, it is a line. Lunch, it's a line. Dinner is a line, washroom, bath, everywhere is a line. Now, because of this quarantine, we are standing for hours just for one shop for buying of one, you know, button thing. Because of quarantine, nobody came to inside of a camp. For example, we had a lot of NGOs that are working for refugees and now they cannot come in. These NGOs are closed. So it's really difficult for the people, especially for refugees, because they don't have any facility. They can also, the refugees, they cannot go to city and the volunteers, they cannot come to Moria camp. Why the people, they are not taking action for refugees? And we are living in this hell. For example, I'm living here since 30 months. It's really difficult with my family. It's really, you know, horrible. Like me, a lot of more people, they are living in here since one year, six months and eight months. So now it's the time to, they should to take action for the people. Until now, we was a quiet. We said maybe they will take some action, but it is the time for hurry. They should take action against, of, you know, this coronavirus. So it will be very difficult to controlling the people because 22,000 people, they are living in very small space. And food line, washrooms, bath place, everywhere the people, they are attached with each other. I never want my mother, she will die. I never want my brother, he will die. And also the 22,000 people, all of them, they don't want to, the, they lost some friends, they lost their families, everyone they are afraid from this coronavirus. And so be, before coming of this virus, please take action for those refugees and please send to these refugees to mainland and safe places. December 20, 2019, and we will be brought here by official by German government from all the way from Italy. But right now we have two weeks rejection to leave the country. And we are somehow confused. The people who we are taking to France, all of them have 10 years document. The same thing with Luzabel, the same thing with Portugal. But we here will be brought here to Germany. Now we have two weeks rejection to leave the country. I think the government will consider because most of us who came here from all the way from Italy, we have so many skillful works. Most of us are very educated. Most of us have so many skillful work we can offer to the to the society. I think they should consider us in in no verification to maybe that will ask us anything we know we can do. We can offer so many things to the society. Because at this time for them, the BAMF don't care. They still give they were giving rejection. If they give you rejection now, they don't want you to go out. They don't want to see you a lawyer. So what do you want? How do you want me to appeal? 
And they said, no, we stopped everything. But you, why are you still giving rejections if you stopped everything? You know, I think this is why, again, I say it's very important for a lot of people to know the fundamental right. Because the moment you are informed, not just informed, but informed with the right information, then it changes a lot of things. The reality of things is, the reality of the situation for a refugee is that your life is on hold. Mm -hmm. And who pushes that uh, button to unpause, we don't know who that is. We don't know. But the thing is, we are also afraid because there's threat of deportation. There's all these intimidation tactics. And of course, when there's lack of information, you don't really, you live in fear. You don't really know if doing something is against or for your situation. You don't know, you're not sure. So life before Corona has not, is not different from life after Corona. It's just that now we are more aware where we stand. So many people are being forced to go back to their country they've deported their back, so many people head up to commit suicide. So the government, nobody cares. If I deport the person, what will come out of it? If I, if I force the person to deport back, what will come out of it? All of us will give a true story, but some of the time the government will say, no, this is not a true story, we need a proof. We are being persecuted out of our country, there's no how we bring a proof out of, for persecution. Since you are here, you are here already. You should be considered. موجود الحين خمسين في المية يعني يعني في في الطبقة الرابعة إنه في حالات. Er meinte, dass hier die Situation ähm, im Camp war nicht schlecht und jetzt werden schlechter in, in dieser Zeit. Und er meinte, äh, es fährt kein Bus, äh, manche Leute haben kein Bargeld, äh, also Sozialversicherung sozusagen. Und auch äh, die Internetverbindung ist sehr schlecht und gibt es keine Aktivitäten, damit die Leute den Tag verbringen können. Und dazu kommt, dass auch, äh, wenn sie auch in die Stadt fahren, sie finden die, sie finden die, die, äh, die Beziehung zwischen die Deutschen und äh, die Ausländer äh, nicht stabil. Also sie, sie, sie finden, das ist, dass, sie, dass die Deutschen hier in, in Duki ein bisschen ähm, äh, rassistisch sozusagen There are some very nice officials and very nice uh, officers, okay, here they are friendly, okay, and they are uh, speaking, okay, chatting with us, but they, there, there is another people, absolutely, they are uh, 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 resistless, okay, so I hate that sort of uh, behavior. I wish not to see anybody Okay, uh, dealt uh, in uh, 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 racism. That's what I wish. Ich weiß nicht, ich habe die, ich habe die Erfahrungen, dass ich in Brandenburg gewohnt habe, also in den ersten Aufnahme auch, aber nicht in Drolokeschein, also in Hutterstadt. Es gibt immer das Gefühl von den Geflüchteten, dass es gibt keine Unterstützung hier oder so, oder es gibt dieses immer dieses Bürokratie äh, Sachen von den Regierungen hier in Deutschland und äh, man bekommt die schlechte Gefühl, dass bleibe ich hier alleine, ich habe so in tausend Jahren einen Krieg gewohnt oder in schlechter politischen Situation gewohnt, also geblieben. They keep nationalities together. My house has just Kenyans. There's another house with just people from Sudan. There's another house with people just from Afghanistan. So as much as you're in the same compound, if, uh, if you, you know one another from seeing one another walking to the barn off, There's no real interaction. Or maybe you can meet one another when you're going to collect your post. Or you meet uh, outside when you're coming from the supermarket. So if the Kenyans, like the people in my house, are going to a German course, there's no way for us to practice the German with sort of, say, the people who are our neighbors from Afghanistan. So we cannot... We, as much as we try to integrate, it's not possible because of the way we've been set up, the living situation. But as long as there's no real German situation to practice what we know, then we cannot really integrate. 
already the Himes are so far away from uh, civilization, from the city, from other Germans. It's so far away that after you leave the supermarket and you leave the hospital and you come from school, you sort of like go back to a small Africa, which is in the Heim, the, the situation where you're living. So how is this possible to integrate? It's, it's not possible. They stop everything. We just go to Menza or ambulance, then come to room. Again, this is life here. What makes me very upset that I don't go to school. It's uh, only the course, uh, the course for language, and it's not um, good as the school. I'm here from seven or uh, seven months, yeah, in uh, German. And I don't go. It's very, very upset when I'm looking at kids at the garage, they're going, and I don't. It make me upset. This um, Azil von Heims, I would bring them closer to the cities where there's populations where I'm going to school, and right after my classroom, I don't have to go too far to remember the lesson. I have to put it in practice in the sense that I'll go to a shop or I'll have to get on the bus and buy a ticket. or. I have to be confronted with the culture right from the classroom. But if I have to go through a forest and I'm walking 4.6 kilometers back and forth and there's nobody and the Germans see me and they move away from me to give me way, then German is as good as a lesson in class and then it's in your pocket until the next day when you come for the lesson. You'll never put it into practice. I think it's more better for if you've been in Heim for like five months, six months, you should be supposed to be transferred to your whole flat. Hey, this is Alex Head, founder of Subtext Radio. This is Subtext. Please go ahead and click the like button and the subscribe button. It really helps us to reach new audiences and promote the artists that we work with. Hit like and hit subscribe.